Some people start the day with a bowl of cereals. Others, like Watkins, start with a hole in one. <laughs> Royal Lytham and St Anne's. That curiosity. A lynx course surrounded not by sea, but by suburban villas. And capricious as only a lynx course can be. As the players gather, bathed in soft sunshine, to practice for golf's greatest event, they know from past experience how easily the course can change from benign generosity to a testing monster that can torment even the greatest golfer. In 1979, the winds blew, and it was here that a 22-year-old boy called Severiano Ballesteros won his first Open. In the process, becoming a man. Seve's golf was a beguiling mix of thrilling virtuosity and devil-may-care adventure as he played shots of bravura brilliance. His victory signaled the arrival of perhaps the game's most original genius. And his dazzling talent seemed certain to dominate the world of golf for years to come. Nine years on, and Seve's back. But today, the magic seems dim. Older, perhaps wiser, the passing years have invaded his nature, and while the technique survives untrammeled, the spirit seems diminished. For many, there's a question mark. Will he ever recapture the elan and verve that was once so inherent? Day one offered an answer, at least in part, to those who doubt it. The weather had turned wet and miserable, savage golfing conditions that led to high scores. Despite the miserable conditions, large crowds had assembled, and they were rewarded by a dazzling display of inspirational golf. Perhaps it's the return to Lytham, or maybe a magical start. Birdies at the first three holes, five under par by the turn. Today, it's the Seve of old. Nothing can contain his flair and invention. Quite simply, in the darkening gloom, he sparkles. The display continues over Lytham's ferocious back nine, one of the most feared tests in golf. He scores a 67 and ends the day exultant, the leader by two shots. But perhaps more important than the score itself is the revival of Seve's spirit. How you doing? After the round, while practicing, he appears relaxed and genial, far removed from the brooding, introspective man of recent years. To the rest of the field, his 67 is a warning light, a signal, perhaps, of danger to come. The next morning, the early starters know that a good score is vital. Defending champion Nick Faldo opened with a level par 71. As he prepares to start his second round, he knows his defence is coming under threat, and the championship, his most treasured possession, could slip from his grasp. Faldo is fortunate. Today, the weather favors the early starters. Those who set out in the morning begin to make up ground. Nick Price, second to the 15th. Joint leader, punches one in. Looks good. Oh, coming on beautifully. A beautifully played second shot here at the 15th by Nick Price. If he can hold this putt, that would be for a birdie three. It's there, that's five under, and Price on his way to a 67 and the outright lead. That lead is threatened but never surpassed. Craig Stadler cards a 68, now he's two under. Two shots clear of Fred Couples. Andy Bean takes a 70 to go one under, which is one ahead of Scotland's Sandy Lyle. Nick Faldo finishes with a 69, two under for the championship. As the day wears on, 
the wind rises, and those playing in the afternoon suffer. Sevi Ballesteros faces the worst. Today, Flair takes second place to more pragmatic <laughs> virtues as Sevi grafts his way to a 71, staying well in contention. But contention for many isn't the chief concern. Surviving the cut is. Bob Charles, a former champion, does so with considerable ease. Gary Player, winner here in 74, flies closer to the wind. Dropped shots over the closing holes mean an anxious wait while his score is radioed back to the control center. All scores are instantly passed here where they are logged and tabulated. Then any statistics required are available at the touch of a button and passed back out to the course and the world's media. Player's concern is relieved when he finds that his 148 is good enough to beat the cut. But as the survivors prepare for their greatest examination, the weather, unpredictable as always on the Lancashire coast, intervenes. Non-stop rain gradually soaks the course, causing at first a suspension of play, then finally, as the greens become saturated, abandonment. The next day, despite those appalling conditions, the course recovers remarkably well. Play is possible, albeit with a late start. But unusually, they play in groups of three. Here's the final match. Ballesteros with a six iron, four under par. 206 yards, this opening hole. Oh, and that's just the sort of shot you want on an opening hole. Played to the heart of the green, chance for a birdie. And now the championship leader, Nick Price. Five under par, he's following Seve's tee shot, and that looks to be a gem. Oh, a lovely stroke from Price. Well, he had a great chance to win this championship half a dozen years ago. Is it going to be his day today? This man doing his best to see that it's going to be his day, and the third member of the group, the big fella, Craig Stadler. First to putt. Really long range. And beautifully judged. Opening par three for Craig. Always good to get away to a nice, smooth start. Now Seve for a two. Thought it was going to roll left to right, but it didn't. That's a nice, tidy opening three. Now, Nick Price, what a moment for him. And what a start this would be if he could pop this one in for an opening birdie. Smooth as silk, six under par, and a two-shot lead. Now Sandy Lau, level par today, and for the championship. Second at the third, 457 yards. Whoa. And that's a super shot from Sandy. We're never quite sure what he's going to do on the day. Could be a 62, 71, or a 76. He certainly got, well, that's six or seven putter for a birdie. This to go one under par. Wow. Yes, well done. Only one under par, five behind Price. But with his talent, anything can happen. He's matured greatly as a player. Someone else is playing great golf. The defending champion, Nick Faldo. Second to the second. Wow. 
hard bounce, but it came in off the slope, not bad at all. He's only two under at the moment, needs a little barrage of birdies if he's going to get really up to the top of the leaderboard. Long putt for a birdie. Good speed. Oh, magnificent putt. Faldo goes to three under par. And the European challenge for this year's championship really going remarkably well. Continuing the, the good work here, Jose Rivero, Ryder Cup teammate of Faldo. He's got off to a cracking start. He's had umpteen birdies along the way. Birdied three, five, and the sixth hole. This long putt for an eagle. Right to the hole side. Well, leaves him a little bit to do. But that uh, should be good enough the way he's stroking him for yet another birdie. Europe's challenge mounts, but the Americans falter badly and fade away. Bean bogeys four and five to move over par. Statler's game collapses. Yesterday's 68 becomes today's 81. Couples can find no consistency. His game blows hot and cold. While Tway, level par at the start of play, falls back to two over. Two par fives in a row here at Lytham, the sixth and the seventh. This is the seventh, the longest hole on the course, 549 yards. And I think the players have been rather fortunate that the wind has uh, blown in the same, or more or less the same direction, every day. Here's Lyle, he's still one under, he bogeyed the fourth hole, birdied the sixth. And this is just a, a flick with an iron on this huge hole. And that was uh, nonchalantly struck with a sort of medium iron, with a six or a seven iron. Now, if Lyle is going to make a charge, he's got to do something dramatic, and he could start here with an eagle three. Quite a swing from right to left. And he, no, he was short, and it would have missed on the left. He didn't quite borrow enough. He'll tap in, though, for a birdie four. And that makes him two under for the day and two under for the championship. Now, Seve, a hole behind on the sixth. An easy hole, or at least it should be. But he hit his tee shot into the bushes on the left, hacked at it left-handed, had another hack at it left-handed. And he's got this putt to save his par. Well, a pretty good effort from long range, but that was a very untidy six for Seve, although it's only a stroke dropped for him, really, in all truth. It's two shots gone. So now he's just three under par and level with Nick Felder, the defending champion. He won't be pleased about that because with his power, I certainly think two strokes have uh, been thrown away there. And what a chance for Nick Price, who, well, hasn't played this hole all that brilliantly, but he's got this 10-footer or so for a birdie. He dropped a stroke at the fourth. This to go back to six under. Oh, well hold, sir. Well hold indeed. And Price finds himself uh, three strokes ahead of the field. While at the eighth hole, Nick Faldo has this long putt for a birdie. The eighth green, elevated, windswept, and Faldo's done it again. Four under par for Faldo, and just two behind. Now up to the twelfth, and someone who's gained a couple of shots today now stands at minus one, needs this for his par. It's Aoki from Japan. Yes, well done. What a wonderfully individualistic style he had. While Price and Ballesteros hold steady and keep their lead, the pack is closing hard. But hope, so quickly raised, can be equally quickly dashed. Jose Rivero's game starts to unravel. 
He drops four shots over the last four holes and his hopes disappear as he falls from three under to one over. AOK2 finds the going tough. His idiosyncratic putting style can no longer save him. His game falls apart. But for others, putting comes easy. Faldo's challenge intensifies when he birdies the 12th. Now, he's five under. Sandy Lyle also flourishes. With his customary brand of power golf, he birdies the 10th and 14th holes. Now, he's four under. When Faldo at 13 sinks his second successive monster putt to become joint leader at six under, the home challenge looms large. But America comes back into the picture when Andy Bean birdies 13, moving to three under par. So Price and Ballesteros are caught at the top of the leaderboard. And now it's a question of how they'll respond. Looking from behind the green at the 13th, one of the few holes here in the last sort of nine that one feels you might birdie. 342 yards of par four. Price has already played his second, and he's played a good one. He's got uh, shortish putt for a birdie. Sevy, you can see in a spot of bother. But he's got a clean lie. Nip that off. Sweet as a nut. Oh, <laughs> he really does play some wonderfully controlled, magical thing. Six under. This to go seven under. Straight in. Two under for the day. No sign of cracking under pressure. Seven under price. Sevy now with this short putt to go five under. Yes, two behind price. One behind the Faldo. Things tightening up at the top of the scoreboard. But the gentleman at the bottom of the scoreboard there at two under Andy Bean needs to hold this putt for his par or he'll start to lose touch. He dropped a stroke at the 15th. This is at the 16th. For a par and oh, one slips away on this hole, only 357 yards. Another one gone. His partner for the day, Faldo. Also dropped a stroke at the 15th. Five under now, two behind Price. Now only one behind Price. Six under par for Faldo. He's not giving up his title easily. The 17th, Sandy Lyle. Having a great run today. He's four under for the round so far, but needs to get down in two here to save par. Splash out of the bunker. Yeah. Oh, a of a shot. They're not hazards anymore, are they? Now this, to save his par. Yes, well done. Stays at four under the car. Looking back down the 15th, this very difficult par four, 463 yards. Seve's played his second, just short of the green. Now Price, seven under. A quick rhythm, good looking shot, dead on line. Chasing it up, urging it on, bouncing it up. Oh, is it, will it, might it? What a shot to play Playing tigerish stuff today, looks as if he's enjoying it as well. Just in the light, fluffy grass. Well, I've seen him play better ones than that. And it's 
still savvy to putt. He must hold this to save his par, otherwise he'll almost certainly drop four behind Price with just three holes remaining of this round. Putted well this week as Seve. Looked more confident. He's hitting the ball much quicker. Not wasting time. Up, down, in. <laughs> Fighting four. Stays five under. Now Price. For a birdie. Eight under par he goes. So that's the position, and it really looks now as if it's a four-man race as they approach the end of day three. Sandy, four under, needs a par four here at the 18th for a round of 67. 412 yards this final hole, but he's found a bunker again, this time on the right-hand side of the green. He got down in two at the last hole from the bunker. Can he do it again? What's the length of swing, the rhythm? Dab, up goes the sound. Good distance, but still a bit to do. Plenty of support here for the home players. Sandy certainly one of those, and also our European friends. This to save power. Oh, dead centre. A good way to finish. He'll enjoy supper tonight. He's played the last five holes in one under par today. And under these breezy conditions, that's very good indeed. So Price, three ahead of the field now. Faldo has dropped back to minus five with Seve after dropping a stroke at the 17th. No, pushed it. Heading towards the right-hand bunkers. And into the same sand we saw Lyle in. Well, Sandy got down in two, and Nick did the same. And whether he does or not, I think it's great to have a regular British sporting event where British players are genuinely competing for the title. Now, smoothly does it. Jordan, almost the identical spot, perhaps a little bit further away from uh, the spot Lyle put his bunker from. But before Nick putts, here's Andy Bean. He's rather dropped away over these closing difficult holes. He needs a par four here for round of 71 and to go into the last day at one under par. Third shot. Good strike. Shaves the hole. It's been that sort of day for Andy. But he taps that one in. Slowly back. In she goes. Level par 71. But he's uh, a number of strokes off the lead. Now Faldo. We'd hate to finish bogey bogey. This for a 68. Oh, yes. Oh, the relief. The defending champion, Faldo. Stout putt, good finish. Very much there for the morrow. And now the final group. First, Price. Dropped a stroke at the 17th. Now seven under. Oh, nice kick in. Mm, could have just run a bit more for him, but uh, safely on. Two putts from there for 69. Now Seve. Five under for the championship. One under for the day. Part of the green. And it's been a bit of a battle for Seve today, but he's kept going. He looks as if he's been enjoying it. He's fought very well, 
He's just two strokes behind and still looking very good. But this man Price is looking even better. A long chance for a birdie. Won't be a million miles away. He really has played superbly well today, Price. He hasn't been intimidated by being out with these great boys, these great champions. Of course, he's won in America. Yes, a 69 today. Started today leading the championship and will finish leading the championship. Seven under par. Ballesteros with this for a three to be round in 69. Just not enough pace to carry it in. Bill, that's a four, around a 70, five under for three rounds. Two off the lead, and the final day starts tomorrow. And I don't think you'll be too unhappy with that position. He's relaxed and looking good, and really, as we look at the scoreboard there, it really must be a four-horse race. Monday, the 18th of July, and for the first time in its history, the Open goes into an extra day. For each member of the leading group, there is a certain vital concern. For Price, the desire to win a major. For Faldo, the need to confirm his greatness. And for Ballesteros, the chance to prove he's back. But as they prepare for the start, one of the all-time greats, Jack Nicklaus, is finishing. This putt for a 67. No, pushed it, but a very brave round indeed from Jack Nicholas, a 68. The great man gets, as usual, rapturous applause, but I wonder if we'll ever see Big Jack back at Lytham playing in another eight and championship. Out to the third, the final group. Seve to play first. Started today five under, he's still five under. Wind assisted, and that looks a good shot. Oh, yes, super shot. And I think these players have been rather fortunate to have played this third hole basically downwind all week. Now the leader, the championship leader, Nick Price. Looks to grip the club firmly. Quick rhythm. Now that's the left-hand corner of the green and it's not coming back and it could catch trouble. He catches the bunker just on the right as we look back behind this green. Now is there a touch of nerves coming into his game? He started at seven under, dropped a stroke at the last hole. And he really needed a super start. Faldo now. He dropped a stroke at the second also. Now four under, swinging nicely though. And that's a sweet shot, a lovely shot from Faldo. A very good chance to get back the stroke he dropped at the last hole. What pressure on this final group. The Sandy Lau's in the match ahead, but uh, tremendous day for these four players. <laughs> Photographers from all around the world hoping to catch a bit of magic. Price looking for a bit of magic out of this greenside bunker, but it races by an almost impossible position. He wasn't all that far from the pin, and just takes his time and scraping the sand over to collect his thoughts. Is this championship going to slip away from him as the one at Troon did years ago? Sevy. Falls to the sea, said he. No price for a par. Oh, what a what a bolter! Oh, he went for that boulder and it dived in. Well, that will surely settle his nerves. Oh, what a save! Now Faldo for a birdie. Sevy swung viciously. Mm. 
Stay up. Stay up. Stay in. Great stuff. Level par for the round, five under for the championship. Now, Sevi. Well, he's seen both the others hold putts. Certainly, prices was unlikely. I'd hate to miss this. Or would he ever miss it? Barrels it in. Stays at five under par. So three holes gone now and just one stroke in it. What a battle. On we go to the seventh. Longest hole on the course, 549 yards, but in these conditions, a drive and an iron. Here's Fred Couples from the USA. He's played very well indeed. He's had umpteen birdies. In fact, at the first, the third, dropped a stroke at the second, an eagle at the sixth, which is a... A very reachable par five, and look at this, off the bank and into the heart of the seventh green. And it must be said, not an overly long putt for another eagle. He's three under for the championship now. Watch the swing. Almost comes in sideways. Has he got the pace? He has. Two eagle threes in a row. That'll smarten your scorecard up immediately. Five under par. And suddenly it's a five-horse race. Now the sixth. Sandy Lyle. Four under. He's powered the first five holes. He's hit an enormous drive here. Just flicks a six iron nonchalantly, arrogantly into the middle of the game. And if he can hold that putt for an eagle three, it'll give him a share of the lead. Hey, lad. Come on. Caught the edge of the hole, it wasn't to be. It'll be a birdie for Sandy. The temperature is rising. Sandy Lyle's birdie means that three past Open champions now claim second place on six under par. Their combined presence tightens the pressure on leader Nick Price. Nick Price at the seventh. Second shot, win behind. Got to get over that big bank in front. Can run it in. Depends on the bounce. Oh, friendly, friendly down the hill. Come, oh, this could be very, very adjacent indeed. <laughs> what a time to play a stroke like that. Making use of all the natural contours. Price is close. Now, Faldo. That's right on line. Oh, unlucky. One more bounce and that could have been stone dead. Well, two cracking shots. A little disappointing that uh, Faldo's didn't go closer. Now what can Sevi do? That's looking very good. Will it go in? Well, three of them peppering the flag. Great stuff indeed. Baldo first to putt. So if he strides up, he'll be loving every minute of it. And so will Price. Faldo's very unlucky here. He's got to putt off the green. And if he gets this close, it'll be a master stroke. No, it's not hard enough. Oh, that's a minor tragedy that might develop into a major one. He hasn't lost his turn, which is always annoying and frustrating, and you can see the annoyance on his face. for a birdie fall. 
must get it. Oh. Hasn't it. So that's only a par, which under normal circumstances wouldn't be so bad, but uh, his two closest opponents have short putts for eagle threes. We could see two shot swing here. Sevy now. Just on the right edge. This to go eight under par. Yes. The cheers ring out. Sevy looks relaxed. His eyes look relaxed. They're not darting about. Pushed into the hole. Rave cut. Two eagle threes. Nine under for Price. Ahead by one. That hole looks to be a turning point. Price and Biasteris have opened a gap which the pack can do nothing to close. Couple's inconsistency, his ability to mix the spectacular with the mediocre, prevents him mounting a real challenge. Lyle's putting stroke deserts him. Drop shots at 9, 11, and 12 finish his chances. Faldo manages to save his par, but he can make no headway because his rivals are now playing great golf. Price attacks constantly, but at the ninth, his birdie putt goes astray. The pressure begins to take its toll. For Seve, the magic starts to flow. He just can't miss. And ominously for the rest, he appears as he did on day one, relaxed and smiling. After nine holes, he and Price now share the lead, three clear of the field. So the final group begin the trek for home. This is where the drama all really begins. Price just off the fairway. 334 yards this 10th hole. Look at this again, a sparkling shot from Price. Cutting uphill, easy putt for a three. Couldn't ask for much better than that. What's Seve's answer to be? Perfect drive. Picks the club up steeply, punches it in. Just dragged it a little bit. Across green putt, hoping the wind might nudge it towards the hole. What drama will unfold over these closing holes? Seve to go ten under down the left side. Done it again. Oh, blow after blow, rain but price. Incredible. Five under for the last five holes. Now price needs this to stay level. swing. He's not capitulating by any means. Both of them now 10 under par. Couple second at the 13th. He's now four under. Lazy, easy style. And a great shot from Couples. A certain birdie. That'll take him to five under, which is very good, but still five behind the leader. The 18th green and Tom Watson with this putt for a round of 72. Yes, well held, Tom, but that's a six over par total of 290 for Watson, the last American winner of this championship. And who do you think he beat to win that championship? 
Nick Price. Alastair is putting for a birdie on this par five, and it disappeared again. Well, what more can you say? Four birdies and an eagle in the last six holes. That's equivalent of six birdies in a row. He looks so relaxed and at peace with all things. What a hammering Price is taking. Every time he puts his ball close or closer than Seve, Seve gets his putt in first. This looks good, though. This to keep the share of the lead, and it wriggles round. So he gets his par. He stays at 10 under, but for the first time today, Seve goes into the lead by one with just seven holes left to play. The contest is now a two-horse race, but the struggle for the minor places continues. Faldo battles bravely to get back on terms, but is thwarted by tentative putting. Couples bogeys four holes on the back nine while Lyle plays as if resigned to his fate. But Price fights on, a par at the 12th, and he shares the lead once more because Seve bogeys 12. He can't believe it. He can't believe he's missed as they move to the 13th. 342 yards, the 13th hole. Both Price and Ballesteros birded it yesterday. Both of them now 10 under par. Price first. He's three under for today. Good going indeed. Oh, look, look at this. Oh, what can you say? That's no more than two or three inches from the hole. Pressure right back on Sally. is close to the hole, Seve's close to Nick Feldo's ball. A good shot, but it looks ordinary compared to Price, who's once more nearest the pin. This now a classic match play dual blow and counter blow. Fantastic stuff. under par and into the lead by one I wonder how long for Ballesteros has got a pretty straightforward putt stay beautifully still and in another one goes this really is magical stuff from the pair of them six under now for the round couples Fred couples he's fallen away rather Bogeyed, the 14th and 17th, and now four under. Tucked up under the edge of the bunker, not a nice place. He's aiming it way left, trying to slice this one. And the 18th, he sliced it round and found more trouble in the gallery. He's had a free drop away from the railings. Very much an inspirational player, couples. Oh, super shot. And he's got that for the most unorthodox par four. But he's got this putt to be round in 67. Oh, and another one slips by, so... Shot's gone at the 17th and 18th. And although he wasn't going to win it, it could be very expensive mistakes. Looking down at the 16th hole, of course, here in 1979, Seve pushed his tee shot away to the right into the BBC car park. He wasn't a million miles off the fairway, as many might have thought. 357 yards. Both Seve and Nick Price drop strokes at the 14th. Hard the 15th. And that's a good drive from Ballesteros. The 
There's three holes left to play. Seve has been there so often. Guys hasn't. But that's a good looking shot. Nice to see the youngsters watching with such keen interest. Watching a good man here. Nine iron to the 16th. as close as Price's second to the 13th. Well, I think Seve should take this hole away with him. Is this hole where he got his birdie in 1979 really did the job for him when he won the championship that year. Price must be absolutely sick in the belly. He's battled away as best he could. And a nice shot again, level with the flag. Maybe he just nudges this little one in for his birdie. Now Price, he's got to do what Seve's been doing to him all day. Get this one in. No, no, weak and away on the right and just for a moment, Price's shoulders seem to sag a little bit. Gets his car, but Seve one ahead, two to play. Quickly to the 18th, Sandy Lyle. Heroes welcome. Wasn't to be his day, wasn't to be his championship, but what a great year he's had. He's fallen away badly over the last uh, nine holes. Needs this for a five. What's left for a round of 74? <laughs> 74 it is, 283, and a day that started so brightly and sadly with a two over par six on the final hole. Just one match left out on the course. They're coming down the final hole. Nick Felder, the defending champion, well, he hasn't played badly. He's level par today, five under for the championship. Virtually certain of finishing in third place. Oh, but that was a wicked one. It's gone into the crowd. He could get a free drop from there. Oh, and it nestles in the little hollow. And there's only one ahead. Much can happen here. A chance for Price. Sevy by no means guaranteed to get down in two. Now, one good hit. One magical shot within a foot, and we could be in a playoff, but he doesn't look all that happy. Safely on, though. Long way from the hole. The last three ball out on the course. They scamper up the fairway to get a better view of the closing scene. Well, Ballesteros, of course, if he could get down in two, would be round in 65.
But we mustn't forget this man, Price. He has played superbly well today. And Faldo. He's also contributed. Third shot. A super one to finish with. Next Ballesteros, an awkward lie, below the level of the green, flipped up, he's got the pace, oh he's got the pace magnificently. body blow for this brave battler, Nick Price, who must hold this putt, this long putt, if he's to force a playoff. No, gave it a run, but it wasn't to be. Well, how would you feel if you were leading this championship with one round to go and you were two ahead and somebody said to you, will you take a 68? I'm sure you'd have said yes. If this man holds this, he'll be round in 68. No, it's a 69, but it matters not. If he'd hold it and done a 68, he would still have lost. And that, in some ways, is quite tragic. But not for this man, who is the champion with a great finishing round of 65. Faldo in for a 71. Third place for him. But the master of the moment, Seve, with one of the shortest putts that ever won a championship. So Seve finished it as he had begun. With one of the greatest championship rounds in Open history, Biasteris wins his fifth major title, his third Open, and his second at Royal Ligament and Downs. He conjured up a final round of 65, 6 under par, for an 11 under par total of 273, with an almost unbelievable display of golfing virtuosity. And he proved he's back.